hot and cold running water on the Rove. This is a point that we've worked hard to get to, and this is a point that's been a whole lot of fun to get to. This is the Arch in Eagle Canyon along the San Rafael Swell. That on this episode of Utah ADV. <laughs> Welcome back, Eric Young with Utah ADV. Glad to have you along the ride. And like I previewed in our last episode, uh, I wanted to tell you about the tankless water heater system that we have now on the Rove. Um, we are in, uh, right now we're in Eagle Canyon along the San Rafael Swell, and it's uh, taken a, a, a little bit to get this big beast here. We've basically taken an ATV road uh, that brought us through some, uh, uh, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's brought us through some great obstacles. And then we came upon the double bridges that uh, I-70 uh, uses to go over Eagle Canyon and uh, had a blast just driving through there. <laughs> cold water on the Rove uh, ever since I put in the system here and it's worked out really well for us but um, there are times when you'd like to take a, a hot shower and use hot water without having to boil it uh, to do dishes and things that way. So inside this orange pelican case is a tankless water heater and that's what I want to show you. So it took uh, a little bit of rigging to put this together uh, in some engineering because the case itself was a little on the flimsy side. So I went through and reinforced it uh, with a diagonal bar, an angle iron that goes on the inside. It's made out of aluminum that attaches to the uh, lid there. And then the, this, the case itself attaches to this plate that attaches to the swing arm as it goes out. The tankless system is inside. And because the top of the tankless system needs to be vented, because that's where a lot of the uh, hot air comes out of that, I decided to use the lid to hold the tankless water system and have the bottom of it just become its door or its cover. Okay, and this is it. It's made by Camp Lux. I looked at a number of them, uh, Julco or Yulco. Um, I, another one and then this one at the price point in with my fear of maybe beating this up too much I thought I'd start off with an inexpensive one and so far this thing has held its ground and uh, has has stayed together over all the washboards and rough roads and things that we've done and it works out wonderfully. One thing I should note that I didn't in the original stand-up for this episode and that is that um, the flanges that hold the Camp Lux tankless water heater on there are at best tack welded onto the rest of the apparatus and uh, I noticed when I got back from our first San Rafael trip that uh, the bottom one had actually broken free from its uh, welds that way. So. Um, I took it out and I went through and I reinforced uh, both those flanges just with some self-tapping sheet metal screws uh, to go through and, and hold that on a little bit better. So uh, just to correct myself, um, it did need to be reinforced. So the unit is, uh, was originally mounted in three different places, uh, up on top and then down at the bottom there are two more places for it to mount into. And really, this was made to be able to hang up, use it, take it down and put away it into a case. Uh, but we wanted this permanently mounted. so. I went through and did mounts on this, uh, pulled it out away so the heat could go through and escape off the top of this. Uh, and in doing so, it just made it a little wobbly. So I went through and reinforced it with a couple of L brackets on top. So this thing is, uh, is it's pretty substantially uh, squared away inside here. 
The case is a little on the large side, but I wanted it that way because uh, I, first off, I needed a place for the gas hose to go to. And so I used some clips that I screwed into uh, the case itself. And those clips go through and, and hold this where it needs to go. And then on top here, if you'll see, uh, this is the shower wand uh, that's held up here with a, uh, a quick fist grip that and everything closes up into that. So let me show you how this hooks up. So at this point, you're familiar with the insert. And that's what drives then the uh, the water pressure for the tankless water system. And I put in this hose that comes off of the pump that's inside the uh, the insert. And this goes through and connects directly with a quick connect into the cold water in. Okay. This I'll go through and connect to the propane. And at this point, if I wanted to, I could hook up my shower head and just go through and take a shower. The, uh, the unit comes on automatically when it senses water uh, going through it, and then it turns off uh, automatically when the water is done. The sink is set up for this as well. Let me show you how. Come on in here with me. So the sink now has a, this didn't have this before, it has both a hot and cold running water. And this is the alternative hose that goes for the sink hot water. So it already has cold water plumbed to it. Okay, what it doesn't have is a hot water plumb. So I put in a spigot down at the bottom of this with a quick connect. Can you see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to connect that there and do this other connect over here on the hot water output side. And I am ready to go. So I have a number of protection valves to keep water from leaking inside the cab. The first one here is on the main spigot that goes inside. I'm going to go through and turn that on. And the second one is up here on the feed hose to make sure that nothing spills inside the cab. But I'm so excited about this for a number of reasons. One, uh, obviously longer time out on the trail if we want. Uh, two, better sanitary conditions as far as doing dishes, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, just making better use of uh, everything that we have and being able to enjoy hot water out on the trail. Since uh, the last episode, when I came out here with Katie and Peter, I have just kind of fallen in love with the San Rafael Swell. And I didn't realize, honestly, um, what's here. I have driven over this part of the area probably a hundred times. We uh, are just taking a day today to come on down and explore a canyon, this one being the, the Eagle Canyon, uh, where the arch is. We're going to go to the Swayze House and then maybe make our way up, uh, road permitting. So we're hoping to go up to uh, Buckhorn Wash there and to take a look at the petroglyphs and then hit the main road on out to Highway 191, I think it is, and it takes us up to Price from that point. So we might have some more B-roll. <music> episode of Utah ADV, I am working on an onboard air system for this. I have gone through and aired up and aired down more times than I care to recall, and I think it's time now to make that just a little bit easier. So I have a few things in mind. Peter has helped me engineer some ideas with this, and so I will outline that for you as I start putting things together here on the next episode of Utah ADV. So thanks for watching. You know what to do. Subscribe if you haven't, please. Uh, hit the like button, all those kinds of things, uh, and we'll catch you on the next time uh, here with Utah ADV. All right. Mm -hmm.